Well, good day, Tubes. How's she hanging? Pretty good here. I just got to fire the truck up. I got to go for a little road trip. Fire it up. Oh, yeah. All right, so a little road trip. I'll show you. Ooh. Sounded neat. Hope that's all right. It never used to squeal like that before when the turbo kind of kicked on, but I don't know. Uh, cracker open here. I got to go on a little road trip to uh, the Bearing Place north of me here. I'm working on the AR right now, and I'm sorry I'm not making videos on it for you. Uh, I've got the clutch tore apart and off the tractor, and uh, this is a bearing. That's probably fine, but while I got it apart, I want to see if I can put a new one in. It might be hard to get though, I don't know. So let's have a look at her here. I got her a little bit cleaned up. And it is kind of lubricated by the oil in here, but this is supposed to be all greased up. And uh, it's got a little split ring here. See a little thing there, you can try to get that off and then take it all apart. But uh, I tried this side, but I'm like, ah, See if I can just get a, maybe a new one, but it's not too bad, I don't think, but it's it hasn't been serviced for a long time, I think, because you can see, like, chunky oil, greasy things in there, so that's probably not a good thing. The rollers don't look terrible, though. Let's see if I can get a better shot here. Oh, come on. Oh, fine. Yeah, the rollers, they don't look bad able to find a number on it here. Made in USA, you guys, we have you with that. It's a Hyatt 129T, uh, I think that's a 9. Looks like a 9. But uh, there's a good bearing place up Shelburne, Ontario. Come on, man, really? Are you going to focus or not? There we go. And uh, I think while I got it apart, if I can get one, I'll put one in. If not, I'll have to clean it up real good, I guess, and uh, put her back in because these uh, parts are <laughs> getting hard to find now. So. Anyway, so uh, we're going to head up see uh, what we can get here. Oh, I love this truck when it's cold. I love the truck altogether. But when it's cold, it sounds like a real truck. <laughs> it's got a real snarl to it. When it warms up, it kind of turns into like a freaking Mercedes sound or something. I don't know. You guys can't really hear it, but I guess it's cold and the metal's really shrunk. You know, everything's all shrunk to its cold state. Anyways, uh, better not film and drive. We'll uh, catch you up there maybe and uh, I'll see if I can sneak a little bit of footage of this place. It's just a tiny, tiny little place and there's stuff piled everywhere, but it's a pretty awesome place. So here we go. So it was awesome taking apart the tractor uh, to take the back wheel off and it's got those wedges on it that had, well, right in the center of the wheel, there's this great big, huge, uh, like wheel weight thing that the wheel, the rim, there's no inside of the rim. There's no center of the rim. That's the center that's mounted right to the axle. So there's these little wedges and the bolts that go through that uh, center wheel hub thingy that um, they bolt together and the wedge kind of pushes on the rim and then kind of tightens. They all kind of tighten down together. Boy, getting that off, that was fun. I wasn't kind of expecting what was going to happen. So. I'm like, oh man, looking at these, they're freaking nuts. They're big too, right? They're like, I don't know what size they were. They're pretty large, three quarter inch bolts or something, whatever they are. They're pretty beefy. And uh, so I'm like, oh, look at them. I'm like, oh, wow, these have been painted. And there was probably about a half inch of stud hanging out. So I'm like, oh, this is going to suck trying to get these off. What the heck kind of tool am I going to need for this? So I'm like, gosh, I don't hope, hope I don't have to heat these up too and get them all red hot. And then spin them off with the impact but i'm like i'm gonna try the impact and just see what happens and uh boy oh boy sure enough got the first one like huh come right off well that's weird so uh it's, it's a big long bolt it's probably it's well it's three and a half i think it is three and a half inch long altogether with a square head on it and the square head goes down through this big cast um center wheel weight thing like the center hub thing so it doesn't let it spin it just kind of stops and then you can do whatever you want with it so pretty clever design there that was a pretty interesting casting that they would have done way back then but sure saves a lot of headaches in the future and it's a good thing because they were thinking about that because that would have sucked 
those things started spinning from the back and there's real no way to get back in there to, to hold that so I mean that would suck but anyways I took the first one off and I did the next one and I just started the third one and it got loose and it just went boof and it come off at me it didn't hit me or nothing but it just kind of popped itself off I'm like holy freaking crap I guess there's a bit of tension behind those other ones there so we uh, we got her off and uh, the tires aren't loaded that one wasn't loaded anyways I'm kind of glad because boy if that was uh, even 50% loaded that probably add another uh, boy that's a pretty big tire that probably add another 350 pounds anyways depending on what kind of stuff it was but if it's calcium it's a little bit, a little bit heavier than the uh, liquid wise it's a little bit heavier than like washer fluid is but uh, calcium rots the rims out so I was glad to see that there's tubes in it but uh, the rims aren't all rotten from having years of calcium in them because oh boy that calcium straight it doesn't freeze and it's actually heavier than like a liter of water kind of thing or whatever but um, how would that happen well, I guess it's more dense I don't know but so uh, yeah we got that tire off and uh, just kind of blew off right at me so it might be fun trying to get her back on I have to go a little bit at a time I guess just snug 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 dun, 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 and then it should be all good but when you think about it there's really not much holding those tires on that's kind of weird <laughs> it's basically those things pushed against those little divots in the rim that tighten down and they kind of push against and then sandwich sandwich in and I mean it works but wow it's different it's been like that they've you know a lot of tractors are like that but um makes it a little lighter I guess too because man if I had to take off that whole center disc too that thing probably weighs about 350 it's thick and heavy duty so next time we have her out I'll show you kind of go over everything but uh, anyways she came off pretty good and I got a couple of pictures here for the disassembly just on the bench hopefully those are all right to post here so I don't think there'd be a major problem with that but uh, uh, bearing and stuff and what the inside of the clutch looks like and uh, the big gear and stuff in there I got one uh, there's three little Paul things that when you activate it it pushes and it pushes the center thing up and down uh, there's like a gear and stuff on there that you know um, engages it I guess into the drive and uh, there's one one of the Pauls there's two little ears that push on the little bolts, the bolts are really long like this, and they go through and they adjust that front uh, front clutch pressure plate. I got one little Paul that's got a, a one ear broken off, so I don't know if I should replace that one or not. There's 30 friggin' dollars US from uh, Steiner Tractor, so I'm like, whoa, what a cruise. Not hard to get apart though, it's all right there, but uh, I, I, I don't know if I want to do it or not. Maybe I should, but uh, see how much this bearing is first here, there, and and then uh, we'll think about that maybe later. But anyway, just thought I'd share that tire story with you. It was uh, very interesting. I never have had to take one like a uh, uh, style of tire like that off before. So it was uh, quite a boom and actually like popped and like, holy friggin' crap, it scared the crap out of me. I'm like, oh, I'm good. I'm, I got my parts still, <laughs> I'm all good. So, but pressure, I guess, behind today. So, I mean, should have loosened each one a little bit maybe and got it kind of loose on the hub maybe and then just took them all off but I uh, didn't have any problems with uh, oh, are you in there? Yep. I didn't have any problems with any of the nuts any of the bolts it was fantastic how well that come apart I was really shocked nothing gave me a problem with it like even getting this bearing out I'm like oh god how am I gonna get that thing it was all rusted and <laughs> all crappy looking and there's a couple little shields you'll see in these pictures so you put uh, one little shield in and then the bearing goes in and another shield. I'm like just tapping those. I'm like, if I wreck that shield, I'll never find another one around, you know, in parts anywhere. So we're going to be careful. So just tap, 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 tap. And it finally popped out. And I'm like, okay, get the bearing. How am I going to get this bearing in? Because it's, it's kind of pressed in. Like it's not loose in there. It was pushed in real good. But then there's another shield behind that. So I slowly tapped that shield and then it started to come out. And out come the bearing. I'm like, sweet. Now in behind the bearing in that there too, there is a really long bushing and it's about three inches, maybe three and a half inches long by like, wow, well, 50, 55 millimeter or something like that. It's pretty big. And that I'm gonna have to leave alone because I don't know where I can find that. You, know, you can maybe get someone to custom make you one like out of, in a lathe or, or something, but holy gosh, that would cost a fortune. So there's one kind of scratch in it 
from something I guess that got in and you know through but it's not ter terribly bad but a little scratch isn't going to do a whole lot for there because you know it'll keep a little bit more oil on there right and cycle it around so it's probably not a bad thing but uh, anyways I am almost there and uh, we'll see what we get for you when we get there all right this place is in a sort of an industrial kind of area It is, there's an auto center there. There's the monument place where we got the container from. He's got this new containers in there now, so that's good. Uh, yeah, it's right here, Parts Co. Let's go to Parts Co and see what they got. I don't know if I'll be able to film in here or not because it's a really small place and the guy will probably see what I'm doing. So, but that's a good sign. Parts Co and the O is a bearing. So that is good. They don't have it. It probably doesn't exist. Except I have one right here. <laughs> These guys are pretty good. They have let me down once on something. He's like, what is that? Where did you get it? I don't remember what it was now. But anyways, let's go see. Well, interesting. He gave me the look. <laughs> I said to him, can you get me one of these? He's like, oh, boy. Uh, uh, ooh, uh, ooh, uh, he hum and hawed about it a bunch and... He measured it up, and uh, he's like, uh, mm, no, I think you better go back to the dealer for that. I'm like, oh. <laughs> so I don't know. Maybe I'll, I'll give them a call. See if I can talk to my buddy John at John Deere. And no, he's not related to them. His name's John. But anyways, I'll see what he says. <sighs> All right, not good. Uh, <laughs> He gave me kind of the, oh, geez, uh, mm, that's been discontinued. I'm like, well, I kind of figured that. But I'm quite surprised this parts code didn't have it or could get something. I mean, there's millions of bearings in the world. Like, how could this one be so weird? Apparently it's weird. But uh, I don't know. I'm going to run it. Oh, oh man, fix your driveway, bud. Oh, I better not run into that guy. There goes the tape measure. Uh, I'm going to, I got distracted with that freaking pothole speed bump in their driveway and that guy was coming around the corner, whipping around the corner. But anyways, I'm going to run it over to John Deere. We're going to head over there now. He wanted to, uh, I said to him, well, I can bring it over if you want. I'm not that far away. Uh, it's about 20 minutes from here, but we're in the diesel, so it'll go faster. But uh, we'll take her to John Deere and uh, oh, see uh, what... Uh, he can get but uh, it's kind of not looking too good so i might have to dig a little bit deeper i got one really good source i think uh one of the old guys from the club super nice old guy and uh, boy i wish he would allow me to film at his place because oh my goodness they he's got more stuff there than freaking john deere has now for john deere stuff it's it's phenomenal his collection of stuff he's got i think three ARs. I'm just going to reference to the ARs because that's what I got. He's got three of them and he's got one that's like extremely rare that actually has hydraulics on it. Very, 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 very rare. <laughs> um, if you watch the plow day video of the John Deere we were driving, the one uh, um, BR, we drove his BR that was all rusted all up and stuff. And uh, he, he had just acquired that like a couple of days before from, from another guy and got it going. And this guy's like, ah, I can't get this thing running. I don't know what he did to it, but he had it running out there plowing like a couple of days after. So anyway, so we're going to run it to John Deere there and see uh, what the verdict is. But I can pretty much guarantee you we're going to be bringing this home and soaking it and cleaning it and re-greasing it. It's probably what's going to happen. Um, and that'll probably be fine. I just kind of thought, you know what, if I got her apart here, I might as well see if I can get a bearing for it. If it's 50, 50, 50 odd bucks or whatever, I'd, you know, put it in. But <sighs> so far, we're not looking too good. <laughs> so we might be soaking her overnight in some degreasing stuff and then getting it all clean and blown out and then uh, packing her back in. So anyways, let's head her to John Deere. All right, we're at the greeting store and orange. They sell still equipment here too. Green and orange, they don't really go together very nice, I don't think. 
Okay, so what do we got here? Ooh, there's a nice little forage, forage machine. I like that. That's kind of neat looking, actually. I want to take that down to the drive-thru at Hortons. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we'll hit her in here. I can't really film in here either, but we can get you some of the green on the outside here. From little too big, too big, too big, too big. So, customer parking. That's me. Sweet. Okay, let's go see what he says to us. Usually when I whistle like that, it means something was very expensive. <laughs> Woo-wee! <laughs> he found it. Um, John Deere in the States. They have to order it from the U.S. of A. And uh, they had, I think, 15 of them in stock. He was able to look it up for other machines and, like, newer stuff now that they still use that bearing in. I thought that was kind of cool, so... <sighs> I think we're gonna either hit up our other buddy here or just clean this one up, regrease it, and put it back in. A hundred and forty-three dollars plus tax. So I'm like, yeah, I, I don't think we're doing that. <laughs> you know, like if I was doing a total complete rebuild on the whole tractor, I probably would spend that money on that. But hundred and forty-three dollars, holy mother! I was thinking like 50 bucks, I'd be like, oh, okay, let's get one. No, no, $143. <laughs> so, I, I, I honestly, I think I'll just put it in some stuff and soak it tonight and uh, uh, grease her back up. I'll pack it in with some, some, some bearing grease and uh, drive on with it. Holy mother, because really that bearing doesn't do really a whole lot if you've got your clutch engaged as soon as you pull your clutch out the clutch will stop spinning but then that bearing is where the, the shaft goes through that clutch and it, that's you know it's spinning on that bearing then right so other than that when it's engaged the whole thing's spinning and that bearing would stop spinning so whoo 143 bucks no i'm not uh, not thinking i'm gonna do that <laughs> oh man Good thing I was sitting down because that's an expensive freaking bearing. But he was able to get one. He was able to get one, but it would have to come from the States, and that would be uh, probably at least a week and a bit, anyways, until we got it here. So, I mean, I got this thing tore apart in my garage. I got to kind of get it, uh, kind of get it back together and get that uh, bay back so I can put the backhoe back in, right? So, but uh, woo, 143 bucks. <laughs> Oh, I knew it would be expensive from John Deere. Uh, I kind of figured that because, you know, usually things are, but wow, we. But uh, no, we're not going to do that. So anyways, we'll uh, hit her home, I guess, and uh, call her a day. Anyways, just about home, all good. Uh, so I'll get that bearing soaking overnight here. I'll let it sit in some of my uh, parts washer juice. A little, bucket of, a little bucket of parts washer juice. That'll loosen her up, and then tomorrow I can... Uh, get a brushy thing in there like a little nylon brush and and try to get all the heather goo out and then a little bit of compressed air at her and uh it'll get most of the goo out and then i'll hit her with uh, some brake cleaner at the very last to get any residue from the parts washer stuff out and that'll be crisp clean brand new almost <laughs> then i can actually look at it really good and see if it's pitted anywhere look the, the rollers look pretty good on that bearing but in the inner race, I don't know. I don't know how good it is, but uh, I could probably take it apart. It's got those snap rings that you can take off, and then the whole thing will come apart. But I really don't, really don't want to have to do that because I'm trying to get it back together and holding everything and get the snap rings. It might suck, and if I break a snap ring, well, that's bad. <laughs> so I'm just gonna leave her alone. I think I'll wash her up and clean her up and uh, put her back together and. Uh, the new discs in i got a pile of cleaning up to do inside the clutch there because i th think i know why i was having problems with it it wasn't the engine itself that leaked oil into it i think someone who drove it they drove it 
the, the lady I bought it from said her husband took it in some parades and stuff, and I kind of think he didn't like the clutch jumpy because those tractors are traditionally fairly jumpy on the clutch, right? They, they're sort of just all of a sudden grabbing and it's and then it's uh, away you go, right? So I think what he did was he opened that cover and he sprayed some kind of oil or something inside on those clutch discs and made it kind of slippery. It still drove. Amazed it made it up my trailer though. <laughs> Still drove, but um, it uh, got the oil all over the discs and everything, and they're just like totally impregnated with oil now. So it's like they're they're no good. So I just need to really get everything all cleaned up out of there because it should be dry in there. Shouldn't be any oil on that side at all. So and uh, yeah, but uh, anyways, we're almost home. So thanks again for watching. We'll catch you all later, and I'll let you know how this goes back together, and then. Um, it drives again <laughs> but uh hopefully i get that wheel back on because i've never done one of them back on off it come off pretty quick and bang exploded at me but uh but anyways catch you all later thanks again for watching you guys have a good day